Hi guys, it's me, Mr. Bertosh, your insanely handsome science teacher. And in this video, we're going to learn about pressure and weather. Pressure is a word that we use a lot in a lot of different contexts. You probably felt pressure in your life, maybe when you were doing something that was scary or important. Maybe you were playing a game like a, I don't know, basketball game or something, and you felt pressure to make a free throw shot, or you were in a, uh, a recital, a music recital and you felt pressure not to mess up your piece that you were practicing. Well, what is pressure? When In that context, it's a feeling of being squeezed by your nerves. And in the context of science, it's actually very similar. It's a pressure is a squeezing of sorts. And we use pressure to, in a lot of ways, one of the key factors that we use in predicting the weather is pressure. So what, pray tell, is pressure and how do we use it to predict the weather? I'm sure you have seen in the nightly news some guy or woman who stands in front of a map and says, I predict that in 10 days there shall be sunny weather or it shall snow. Where I grew up, there's a guy who wore a white coat when it was going to snow. Uh, and that's how we knew that we were going to get snow, is if he wore the white jacket in his weather report. But how are they doing this? How do they know what the weather is? So let's start with pressure first. In another video, I talk about how when things are heated, and when I say things, I mean anything, substances, material, matter, when it's heated, it expands. And when it's cooled, it contracts. And the atmosphere, the air, is no different. It is made of matter. It feels like it's not solid. It's not like a rock, but uh, it's still made of atoms. It's just that the atoms aren't connected. The atoms in the atmosphere move around freely, but when they are heated, just like any other substance, they expand. And when they're cooled, they contract. They get closer together. They get more squishedied uppedied, and they bump into each other more. So... Well, I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about again? I think we were talking about pressure. Yes, indeed. So when uh, the at when the atmosphere gets heated, it's going to expand, right? And as a result of that, what do you think? Do you think the pressure is going to be greater? Or do you think the pressure is going to be less? So you're standing in the atmosphere, in some area. And I should talk now about parcels of air, by the way. So scientists have this term that they call a, an air parcel, a parcel of air. And different parcels of air can be at different pressures. What is a parcel of air? It just means a, it's an imaginary way of talking about it's how scientists envision uh, different packets of air or there's not really a border, you know, there's not like a bag that's holding an air parcel in or some sort of membrane around it. But we but we talk about parcels of air. So in one area, I might be in a parcel of air and somewhere else there might be another parcel of air. And sometimes they're bigger and sometimes they're smaller. It's just a packet of air that has similar conditions. So let's suppose 
that being the handsome guy that I am, that I am handsomeness has nothing to do with this, but you know, got to mention it. Let's suppose that I am standing in an in a parcel of air, in an air parcel, and it has the ground is really hot. Let's say it's a hot day, and so the surface of the Earth has gotten super de duper hot. It's like 100 degrees outside. That hot surface heats up the air above it because the sunlight hits the ground and it radiates back upward into the air. And as a result of that radiation from the ground, the air gets warmer and warmer and warmer. Have you ever noticed, I'm sure you have, that the air around a shadow, like in the shade, is much cooler than the air in the sun? Why is that? It's the radiation coming off the ground, right? It's not actually the air. That, the heat's not the air that you're feeling. The heat that you're feeling is the, coming from the ground. It's radiating like a heater from the ground. And when you're standing in the shade, there's less heat radiating up from the ground because the ground there is not, It's the sun's not hitting it. When you're standing in the sunlight, you feel a lot more heat, but it's not the heat in the air that you're feeling. It's the heat radiating from the ground. So let's say I am standing somewhere where the ground is hot. It's a summer day. And what does that heat do? It radiates from the ground up into the air, and the air parcel in that particular place where the ground is hot gets warmer and warmer and warmer. And as it does, what happens to the gas in the atmosphere? As that gas gets heated, as it gets warmer and warmer, it expands, right? It gets further apart. It expands in every direction. What is that expansion going to do to the pressure? So I have the same amount of gas atoms, but now all of them are further apart. So the result of that is going to be that I am going to have less, the density is less, the density goes down. And when the density goes down, so too does the pressure. So as it is heated, as the air parcel is heated and the density expands, the gas expands, lowering the density, so too am I lowering the pressure. So heat, very often in an oversimplified explanation, because there are other factors too that affect pressure, but uh, this is called, what I'm explaining is called the gas law, and it's very complex, and there are a lot of equations that meteorologists go to college for years to learn. And even then, they're not perfect at predicting the weather because there's so many factors that can go into it. But as a general rule, very often, when you heat the ground and the air parcel above it then expands, the result very often is that the density of that air parcel goes down. And as a result, so too does the pressure go down. So the amount that you are being squeezed, you are being squozen, you're being squozenified as a person who is standing in that air parcel is less because the air is spread out. And so it's not squishing down on you quite so hard. Okay, well now let's reverse this and let's imagine that we are standing somewhere cold. Either it is now nighttime or it's winter or whatever, but it's cold. Okay, well, what's going to happen now? The ground is cold. It's not radiating quite so much heat up into the atmosphere. So the molecules and atoms in the atmosphere, they're going to have less energy. They're going to slow down, and they're going to begin to contract back in, and they are going to squeeze and aerate you. They're going to squeeze you, squish you, more uh, firmly, with more pressure, the pressure is going to increase. 
So again, I am oversimplifying my explanation and being uh, very general about how I'm explaining this because it doesn't always result in lower temperatures creating high pressures, but as a general rule, it very often does. So when the temperature on the ground is low and less heat, less energy is radiated up into the atmosphere, then very often the atmosphere contracts, squishes in, and that creates a high pressure. So when it comes to predicting the weather, here's the deal, a couple of things. First of all, as a general rule, and this is why a weatherman's job is so hard, a meteorologist, I should say, because there are weather women, many of them, very good weather women. So uh, a meteorologist's job is so hard is because there are so many factors that they have to account for. That's why they don't always get it right. But uh, as a general rule, low pressures are associated with weather, like bad weather, storms and wind and rain and snow and things. Whereas high pressures are very often associated with good weather, sunny days and blue skies and, uh, you know, not a lot of uh, chaos in the atmosphere. Okay, so low pressures tend to produce bad weather. And so then think through this. If it's a kind of a logical progression, the energy, weather needs energy, right? It's a lot of movement. It create You have to have some sort of energy to feed it. That energy is the heat. So the heat comes in, hits the surface of the earth, heats the atmosphere up. The atmosphere expands, creating a low pressure. And all of that energy that's pushed up into the atmosphere from the ground then causes all kinds of things to happen. Like, for example, wind. So imagine that I have a high pressure in one air parcel and I have a low pressure in another air parcel and they are sitting side by side. And when I say, you know, side by side, we're talking potentially about hundreds or even thousands of miles, okay, like across a continent. Let's say in one part of the country I have a high pressure and in another part of the country I have a low pressure. What's going to happen between the air that's between those two parcels? And by the way, how do I even identify or uh, mark the pressure on a map? Scientists use something called isobars to signify the amount of pressure on a weather map, and I'm sure you've seen this if you've ever watched the weather. You've, I'm sure you've seen isobars. Okay, an isobar is simply a line that shows similar amounts of pressure. So within each isobar, there's a similar amount of pressure. So anyway, let's suppose I've got a high pressure and a low pressure, and between them, there's something called a front. The front represents the front of a high pressure or a low pressure, okay? Well, what happens in that like battle zone where the high pressure and the low pressure are going to war against each other? Uh, what's What happens there? The wind typically tends to blow from a high pressure towards a low pressure. Why? Why is that the case? Well, if you think of it logically, the molecules in an atoms in a in the atmosphere, in a high pressure, they're like all squished up and they're like, oh my gosh, there's no room. Everybody's bouncing into me. I'm, this is crazy. In a low pressure, there's a lot more room. The molecules can like stretch and they're like, oh, this is comfy. I got lots of room. And so the atoms and molecules, the gas atoms and molecules in the high pressure 
are being pushed out. They're being pushed away from the high pressure and they there's more room in the low pressure. And so they're going to rush in to take up that extra room. So you get a wind that forms from a high pressure and it runs towards a low pressure. And like everything I've said in this video, this is also over, overly simplified because there are other factors that affect the wind like friction and the Coriolis effect. And we will talk about the Coriolis effect in a, another video. So it's not like a perfect thing. It, it doesn't like go in a straight line directly to the low pressure. It tends to kind of arch. It tends to create kind of a circle, circular effect. But in general, when you are, when we are talking about pressure, Again, speaking in generalities and overly simplifying things, an area where the ground is hot is going to heat up the atmosphere because that heat's going to radiate up. That is going to cause the atmosphere to expand, and that will decrease, lower the density, which will create a low pressure. And an air parcel where the ground is cold is going to contract, and it's going to get more dense, more squished up. That's going to create a high pressure. The air molecules are going to try to escape the high pressure because it's not comfortable and it's squished up and it's tight. They're going to try to, they're going to blow away from the high pressure towards the low pressure, creating wind in a, in a line from high pressure, more of a curve really, from high pressure to low pressure. And I can predict with some degree of uh, not certainty, but a high degree of likelihood that I will have bad weather wherever I have low pressures and I will likely have good weather where I have high pressure and on the front between them, the battle front, I am going to have particularly bad weather. Like for 10 or 15 minutes as a front goes across your community, you, your trees are going to shake and you're just, you're going to have this you know, brief period of a lot of uh, forceful wind. And that is pressure. And that is how we use pressure to uh, predict the weather. <sighs> and that's a lot of pressure off my shoulders because I don't have to explain pressure now because I am done. Hi guys, thanks for watching my video. These rambling science videos where I go unscripted and just kind of barf up all the science knowledge out of my head are part of a series that go along with an online class that I teach, which you can sign up for if you go to handsomescienceteacher.com. I also have a whole bunch of free resources for homeschoolers. I have uh, hundreds of articles on every topic that uh, covers your entire science curriculum from fifth through eighth grade. I have online games and quizzes, all curated and written by uh, this handsome guy, uh, a science teacher with, well, three, three degrees, but two of them are in science. So it's uh, targeted right to and directly to your uh, your science student. So sign up, subscribe to the channel, and I release lots of videos. Also, in addition to these ones, lots of little uh, short videos that are like two minutes long that cover science topics. Those ones you don't get to see my handsome face, but they're still good videos and they're much more targeted. And those ones are scripted, so you don't have to hear me like you are right now going blah, blah, blah. The end. Uh, subscribe. Thank you. Goodbye.